studios, Mr. Sushil Pandit is joining us. Rahul Shivshankar, our consulting editor, is here uh, with us as well. Uh, Mr. Pandit, for you, as a Kashmiri Pandit whose family had to flee in the 90s because of you know, the start of militancy at that time, what is a day like today? What is the verdict like the one that we've heard from the Supreme Court? What does it mean to you personally and for the state of Jammu and Kashmir? I think as a citizen of India, I'm really elated and happy that uh, 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 it has been reaffirmed uh, by none other than the Supreme Court five-judge bench that Jammu and Kashmir is inalienable part of India and there is nothing separating it from rest of the nation in terms of law, provisions or any other constitutional manner. And this is really a very happy situation. But as a Hindu from Kashmir who was expelled violently, I am afraid I have nothing to be happy about. There is an observation by Justice Sanjay Kishan call for some truth and reconciliation. I don't know who are we supposed to reconcile with and what kind of a truth remains to be uncovered. But just as they had given a deadline of September 30 for the elections, I am wondering what is the deadline for our justice? It's been 34 years and waiting. When are we supposed to? There are generations who have gone, victims, who have gone unacknowledged as to what happened to them. Forget justice. And there are st several more waiting to be heard. Witnesses are okay. at the fag end of their life. And they are waiting their testimonies to be recorded. And those who are our killers are still roaming free. They are having a whale of a time. Okay. So it is hardly a consolation as far as victims of genocide in Kashmir is concerned. But as far as political organization and consolidation of India, it is indeed a happy moment. Uh, Rahul Shivshankar, what does today's verdict, it has a lot of legal <laughs> nuances, the fact that you know, the president's action was not malafide. The president is not bound by the Constituent Assembly because the Constituent Assembly ceases to exist, ceased to exist from 1957. What does all of this mean in the overall legal context for the government of India, center state relations? And also, what may this mean for 371, uh, which governs and guides uh, the Indian Union's relationship with some of the northeastern states? Uh, those are very good questions, uh, Zaka, I have to say. Look, uh, at the, on the face of it, of course, you can sum it up in just a few words by saying it was all legal. That's the principal takeaway because we can debate, of course, the applicability of Article 370, the politics behind it, but till you didn't have a legal stamp on the government's decision, one would still believe that a large number of people could still scratch really at that wound that they claim was inflicted upon their psychology by removing this special status. The courts have been unambiguous on the five principal questions that were raised. On one, of course, they have not taken a stand preferring perhaps posterity or perhaps someone in future to determine whether actually a, the central government can change the status of a state to a UTI, that, uh, to the Union Territory of India. That hasn't been really addressed. It was left a little unsaid. But yes, Zaka, this is a phenomenal watershed moment in India's politics because, and I have to bring in politics here, simply because the entire ecosystem has been claiming constantly that we are not addressing the very peculiar circumstances in Kashmir born out of its separate status in a manner that is commensurate with the original compact that was made with the state and its people. Now that goes because there is no one special in India as far as yeah. Kashmir itself is concerned. So any process that applies to you as a citizen living in any other part of the country will now apply very clearly to the state of Jammu and Kashmir sure. and its people. So let me also go across to Arunima who is joining us from outside the Supreme Court. Ananya was inside the court when the Constitution bench uh, read out its verdict. Uh, Ishan is joining us from Srinagar. Ishan, uh, I know it's early days yet, but what kind of reactions are you getting from uh, the local folks there on this decision, this historic decision by the Supreme Court of India Constitution bench and also from the politicians? We heard from Gulam Nabi Azad, I believe, some time ago. But what about the Omar Abdullahs, the Mehbooba Muftis of the world? Have they reacted yet to the court's decision today? 
Uh, well, no word from Umar or Mehbooba. Those were the principal and uh, first uh, who uh, started criticizing the center's move. They haven't spoken yet, particularly on 370. While Umar has been claiming that he is not being allowed outside his residence, uh, but uh, Manoj Sinha says in Jammu that no one has been detained at their homes. Uh, Mehbooba hasn't tweeted about anything so far, uh, no, nor has Umar uh, regarding this uh, de historic decision by the Supreme Court. It'll be interesting to see because a lot of politics of these regional political parties was dependent upon uh, the Article 370. Uh, one, because they went on to promise voters that they will bring back Article 370. It will be interesting to see that uh, what route will they adopt now? What will be their further course of action? Uh, because we saw rallies after rallies being conducted by PDP and the National Conference in villages where they have been promising that statehood election will be something which will be on their main agenda when it comes to JNK Assembly elections. Uh, they, they have been going with a battery of lawyers to the Supreme Court. Uh, you know, definitely there will be a disappointment for both the parties. But both of them have been telling CNN News 18 that they will adopt a political way uh, and they had adopted, uh, uh, you know, uh, gone to the Supreme Court and tried to get justice from there and uh, they will be dis disappointed because they were trying to ensure that the verdict is in their favor. But now it is okay. not. Now, how do they go from here onwards? How does their politics swing around this? Uh, because uh, NC carries a lot of history and politics around 370 on their shoulders. I tried to ask this to Umar a few days back. He said that after Supreme Court verdict, we'll sit down and then we'll decide that okay. what are we going to do uh, and how what will be a further course of action. Ishan,